Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about febrile neutropenia. Febrile neutropenia. Okay, let's go. In febrile neutropenia, I'll first of all address the neutropenia aspect of this presentation. Neutropenia is an absolute neutrophic count less than 1,500 cells per microliter. Severe situation may occur with absolute neutrophic count less than 500 cells per microliter. Neutropenia is said to be profound when the absolute neutrophic count is less than 100 cells per microliter. Infection risk in neutropenic patients. Infection risk in neutropenic patient is inversely proportional to absolute neutrophic count. And why that? It means the higher the level of neutrophils, the less the risk of infection. The lower the level of neutrophils, the higher the risk of infection. So the risk is higher when the absolute neutrophic count is lower than 500 cells per microliter. It is also higher if the neutropenic situation persists for a very long period of time. For example, if neutropenic situation persists for more than a week, then the risk of infection will be very high. Fever in neutropenic patient. Fever in neutropenic patient is described as an oral temperature greater than or equal to 38.3 degrees Celsius, or a sustained temperature greater than or equal to 38.0 degrees Celsius for more than one hour. Mathematically, we can accurately estimate absolute neutrophil count using two methods, okay? Either we go with Y plus X count multiplied by polymorphonuclear cells divided by 100 plus bounds divided by 100. So whatever you get, when you add polymorphonuclear cells divided by 100 plus bounds divided by 100, then you multiply that by Y blood cell count, then you get A and C. Or you just get the percentage of polymorphonuclear cells plus percentage of bands, then multiply by Y blood cell count. So that will be the ways to go about getting A and C. That is absolute neutrophil count. Secondary to infection. Not all fever in neutropenic patients are secondary to infection. Bacteremia will be present in only less than 25% and infection in about 30%. Both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria could be found here. Other infections. Not only gram-negative, not only gram-positive bacteria, fungal infection could be present. Viruses are not excluded, but assay of procalcitonin will be very useful here because procalcitonin will indicate whether we are dealing with bacteria or virus, or even if we have administered our antibodies to handle the bacteria, if we are winning or not, the value of procalcitonin will make that clear to us. You can check my channel for a detailed presentation on procalcitonin alone. I have two publications on that, okay? Procalcitonin. Procalcitonin will help us to distinguish between viral or bacteria but we not say the type of bacteria we're dealing with, then we can go further to have MCS done. But even if we are sure uh, that this is bacteria and we have uh, uh, prescribed and we've administered our antibodies, procalcitonin can help to let us know if we're winning 
or not, if we have to change the antibiotics or increase the dose or whatever we need to do, we will know with the value of procalcitonin. Diagnosis. To make an accurate diagnosis of fibra infection, we have to take that accurate history. And the history with a thorough physical examination will guide us. Okay? The history of infection is very necessary here in the past and in the present. Antibiotics used before and right now. History of blood transfusion and any other comorbidity. As a matter of fact, history of cancer, and so on. Then we have general physical examination, starting with general inspection. We we'll check the oral cavity, the skin, the lungs, the abdomen, the perineum. We'll check the IV lines if we have IV lines in situ. And while checking all these areas, we'll be checking for pain, erythema, rashes, abscess, crackles, tenderness, and so on. Still on diagnosis. After thorough history and physical examination, and we're having our clue, then we'll head to the lab. Complete blood count should be done with differentials. Absolute neutrophil count should be done daily and calculated based on the formula given earlier. We have to do renal function test here we have to do liver function test. Still on diagnosis, we will then move further to have blood culture. We will have two sets of samples taken, one from peripheral line and another from central venous catheter. And what are we going to do with that? Of course, gram staining, microscopy, culture and sensitivity, fungal staining, and of course, we take the urine for urinalysis as well. And we can even take the urine for microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. Okay, still on diagnosis, now we're heading to the radiological lab. But there's a note here. We will not delay antibiotics and administration till after we've done all these gamuts of investigation, like chest X-ray and CT scan and so on. No. We can begin our empirical antibiotics. Then we head to chest X-ray or CT scan center. Caution and samples. Someone is asking me, how do you mean? Oh, don't worry. Caution. Please no digital rectal examination in anyone suspected of having fibra neutropenia. No digital rectal examination, no. Even if you are suspecting prostatitis or benign prostatic apatrophy on account of which digital rectal examination will give a clue, not right now. Okay, and we could obtain certain samples, an example will be given here, that's stool, CSF from Dumbo Punctual, sputum, bronchial alveolar lavage, skin lesions aspirate, or skin lesions biopsy, and urine could be the different samples that we could obtain for our investigation. To make risk assessments to determine whether an individual were fibra neutropenia or not, then we'll go to some parameters like chemotherapy being taken by this individual, sufficiently myelosuppressive to result in severe neutropenia of absolute neutrophic and less than 500 cells per microliter for seven days plus. We want to find out if that is the situation here. We want to know if the multinational association for supportive care in cancer is less than 21, or there are central venous catheter size. We want to see all IV catheter size, particularly central venous catheter. And we want to know the clinical index of stable fibrile neutropenia if it is greater than three, and this patient is having solid tumor. The part of risk assessment is, is there any liver impairment here? 
Are we dealing with severe sepsis already? Are we into septic shock in this patient already? Are we having swollen difficulty here? Of course, needless to say, when we are dealing with any of this, okay, the risk is high. Because what are we talking about? Someone is in septic shock. What else are we waiting for? Act quickly, save that life. The part of risk assessment is, do we have diarrhea here? Any renal failure? Nausea and vomiting? Is there any catheter in situ with infection? I have a respiratory infection. I'm dealing with pneumonia somewhere. Is this patient having comorbidities like chronic or surgery pulmonary disease? How about cystic fibrosis? Has this person been a non asthmatic patient before now? Is this patient on disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs like infliximab, that is Remicade, that could suppress the immunity? Is this patient on glucocorticoids for a long period of time with? myelosuppressive effect that will decrease the immunity or are we battling with the worsening cancer situation or the progress is poor? What are we dealing with? We need to assess all this. That's why we call it risk assessment. So when we are dealing with any of this, the risk is high. Okay, we are not done yet assessing the risk. We have to also check certain things, okay? We will look at the mucous membranes, you know, the mouth, the inner region, everywhere for erythema, for cellulitis, ulcers, bronchus, we'll check for vesicles, I have a paronychia somewhere, mucositis, dental problems, inner fissures, and pyelonidal abscess. We will also check for other that could be due to fungi, bacteria, non-tuberculous mycobacteria, or other due to viruses. We will be checking out for vesicles that will indicate we are dealing with virus, or nodules that could be fungi in origin, or bacteria, or non-tuberculous mycobacteria. As a matter of fact, we can also check for skin manifestations of tuberculosis. And I have that already published on my channel. You can check you know, for TB skin manifestations. You will find that on my channel here. We will check out for erythema gangrenosum. That could be secondary to pseudomonas originosa or stavorius. Are we having erythema multiforme? That will indicate viral infection or antibodies therapy. Aspergillus, galactomannan antigen, and beta D glucan. Note this. We have to take samples for all A to F above before we administer our antibodies. Remember, when we're heading to radiological uh, lab for radiological investigation, chest x ray or CT scan, I said that you will not delay your empirical antibiotics because of radiological investigation. But first thing first, before administering your antibiotics, please take the short time to withdraw blood samples for all these investigations. Okay, treatment. But before we go into treatment proper, I want us to grab some pieces of information. Fibrin neutropenia is an emergency situation. Good people in oncology unit are already prepared for this. Once they know this is fibrin neutropenia, they will activate all they need to do as per emergency situation. Many thanks to them. We'll take samples. After taking samples, immediately we will commence our empirical management or antibiotics. We will not wait for the result of microscopy, culture, and sensitivity before we start antibiotics. So empirically, we will start. In our patient on chemotherapy, and 
he or she had been on that chemotherapy for the past six months, now having fever. Hello? That is fibra neutropenia until otherwise proven. Now, treatment. The first thing first. This is an emergency, right? Okay, I'm going to check the airway. Orifices, the air, the nose, the mouth, everywhere, patent, foreign body removed, any blood, mucus, sunshine. Okay, breathing. What is O2 size? What is respiratory rate? Any central cyanosis or peripheral cyanosis? Is the abdomen and the chest moving together during respiration? Any percussion done? Auscultation done? Obvious deformity? Adventitious breath sound somewhere? All done. Okay. C. Circulatory system. What is the BP? What is the BP, please? What is the heart rate right now? Any features of dehydration? You check the, you know, conjunctiva, the palo or anything, okay? IV lines, IV fluid. Is the lab report back? It's not back, okay? Put the foliage catheter. Any wound to be dressed, get it dressed. Repeat the vital signs. Hook up vital signs machine. Empirical antibodies. I'd already started, though we've not gotten the lab back, but if we have it, we'll review right now. Still on that, we are going to get our vessel pressure ready. Okay? And we are going to, of course, this is emergency treatment already. All cases of neutropenic patient with fever will be treated as an emergency case. We have to rule out vitalitis. You can check my channel for that. I have a separate presentation on that, okay? Tivulitis will be a differential if there's an associated abdominal pain. Still on treatment, even when microscopy culture and sensitivity lab report is back and is negative, we'll still continue with antibiotics until absolute neutrophic count is greater than 500 cells per microliter and is rising. If fever, however, persists, we have to assess for infection site. Then check back with our MCS. We will continue empirical antibiotics or change according to MCS results. We have to continue antibiotics for 14 days or longer. The determinant of cessation of, of antibiotics are the following. If ANC is greater than 500 cells per microliter, mm -hmm, or procalcitony is giving us the clue that we are winning, or is telling us is even viral, is not bacteria, mm -hmm, or we are dealing with a situation whereby there's resistance to the antibiotics we are giving because procalcitonin will give us a clue. You are dealing with bacteria. You've given your antibiotics, but it's not working. Then we're going to stop that very antibiotics, go over the MCS results again, the sensitivity and susceptibility, then we'll pick another antibiotics that the organism is susceptible to. If on antibiotics for seven days, then we will review. If the situation is worsening and we are picking signs and features of infection, or the patient is clinically unstable, then we'll do something. And what is that? We'll increase the broad spectrum antibiotics coverage. Okay? We are going to widen this scope. We're going to cover more ground. And on top of that, we will add antifungal therapy like voriconazole or amphotericin B to be able to cover wider. And I won't forget to remind you, procalcitonin will help you again because it might be viral. 
Okay, still on treatment. You can have your CT or MRI, culture samples from drain sites, repeat blood culture, microscopy, and sensitivity, do serial serum galatoman tests. The best treatment modality is to also get ready for sepsis treatment. Prevention, yeah, I like this. I, I like prevention more than therapy, okay? But if we are dealing with solid tumors and the patient is on conventional chemotherapy and ANC is less than 500, but it's not gonna be that for a long period of time, there's no need of prophylaxis yet. Why? It's low risk, okay? We have to maintain antiseptic practice. You know, when we are dealing with cancer patients, the immunity is down, the chemotherapy is going on, some are on glucocorticoids, some are on metotrexate, um, so on and so forth like that. Sepsis should be, you know, even written boldly that, you know, we would take all possible precautions to prevent sepsis. So antiseptic practice will be the key at the centers where cancer patients are treated, where probability of febrile neutropenia will be high, okay? And that will include reducing contacts. Yes, in fact, certain nurses will be assigned to only you no know, certain patients in oncological ward, and some patients cannot even have their family members walking into their you no know, hospital bedroom just like that. All these are great precautionary measures, and we appreciate all those wonderful nurses. Reduce contact with flowers, not only contact with human beings, contact with flowers. Even some nurses, once they develop any sign and symptom of infection, they will be allowed to stay back home. Why? Not to add salt to injury. Plants, visitors, keep off in febrile neutropenic patients. No flowers, no plants, no visitors. Only assign nurses. Still on prevention. All high risk patients should receive prophylaxis. Remember, I have just said in the last few minutes that you don't need prophylaxis in such a patient, right? Low risk. Okay? Now, high risk patients should have prophylaxis. And you can go with amosic clavulanic acid with or without ciprofloxacin or ciprofloxacin with clindamycin. Still on prevention, and I'm not done yet with antibiotics that you could use for prophylaxis. If fluoroquinolone will not work, which means you are dealing with fluoroquinolone resistant organisms, then you can switch over to intravenous carbapenem, tazosine, keptriazone, or keptazidine. You can give vancomycin with ciprofloxacin or vasitronam. Linezoli, that is reserved antibiotics, that is good as an antibiotic at the same time as antidepressant. You can check my channel for linezolid. I have published a full presentation on linezolid. We have to educate our patient to call 911 if condition is getting bad. Okay, culprits. Because we want to know what is responsible for this. Sometimes there could be none. None. None at all. And in half or 50% of the cases, it could be by gram positive agents like staph aureus or streptococcus biogenes. In one third of cases, it could be by gram negative bacilli, for example, Escherichia coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, and Enterobacteria.
It could be as a result of fungal infection like Candida or Aspergillus. Herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 might be involved. Our varicella sister, Satomegal virus or Epstein Barr virus could be the culprit. Other culprits could be Clostridioides, Anaerobes, Mycobacteria, Tosoplasma species, Plasmodium species, Babesia, or Nocardia. About prognosis. Wow, this is horrible. About 5 to 20 percent will die. Mortality is a high 5 to 20 percent. There will be increased mortality up to about 50 percent if fibrin neutropenia is associated with septic shock, pneumonia, or bacteremia. That is why we act fast and we do everything, okay? Particularly in people with comorbidities. Imagine someone with COPD or cystic fibrosis now developing cancer and having fibrin neutropenia. And we have said right now that pneumonia could increase the mortality to about 50%. Hmm. Decrease chemo if the individual is febrile and the neutrophy level is low at the early part of the treatment. Okay? We can use granulocyte colony stimulating factor, for example, figastrin, prophylactically after chemotherapy administration. But that will be useful before the onset of neutropenia. In conclusion, thanks for following this presentation up to this level. And if you have, you will agree with me that the bedrock of this problem is all about cancer and the person is taking chemo and now dealing with another problem on top of that. So it is chemo that will cause myelosuppression. And with pancytopenia, there will be neutropenia. And then we will estimate our absolute neutrophic count. And when there is very low absolute neutrophic count, then opportunistic infections will set in. And we'll be dealing with bacteria, gram-negative, gram-positive, fungi, virus, tuberculosis or non-tuberculosis, mycobacteria, all of them. And the individual will then come down with a diagnosis known as febrile neutropenia. Once that is the case, there is an emergency in oncology world. Immediate empirical antibiotics will be instituted in addition to antifungi and frigastin. If that is done immediately, that will help greatly. So, go to the preventive measures once again, please, because prevention, particularly all measures against sepsis, cannot be overemphasized. With that, I come to the end of this presentation. Thanks for listening. Please let's appropriate all these measures so that we'll be able to save more lives. Thanks for listening once again. Remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it.